white people go around, it seems to me, with a very carefully suppressed terror of black people, a tremendous uneasiness. They don't know who, they don't know what the black face hides. And they're sure it's hiding something. What it's hiding is American history. You know, what, what, it, what, it, what, it, what it's hiding is what white people know they have done and are doing. You know, it's what, you know, white people know very well one thing, and it's the only thing they have to know. They know this, everything else I say is a lie. They know they would not like to be black here. They know that. Now they know that, and they're telling me lies. They're telling me and my children nothing but lies. My best friend, a black boy, jumped off the George Washington Bridge when he was 24 and I was 22. And I was sure that I, I was going to be next. Just from despair or...? From despair, from rage, you know. Because you can get to a place, where, you know, where you're in battle so often that you... That's all you, that's all you can do. You know, you've been beaten so hard. All you can do is... is your world narrows to a, a kind of red circle of rage. And you begin to hate everybody, which means you hate yourself. You know, and when that happens, it's over for you. Baldwin has taken that despair and rage and turned it into novels, theater, and essays. Characters drawn from his family and friends. This fall, Dial Press is publishing his 19th book, a novel called Just Above My Head. Nobody wants to write it until he's dead. But to answer your real question, there's a greater chance when the black writer today than there ever has been. The children asked him the same question I wanted answered. Why did he move to Paris? Paris is very important to me because I was able to, um, well, I was able to take a deep breath, and I was able, this may sound a very corny way to put it, but I wanted to, I wanted to find out where being black ended, where I began, or vice versa. I mean, that some things had happened to me because I was Jimmy, and some things had happened to me because I was black. And I wanted to find out how to get these things together. I didn't want to spend the rest of my life going around saying, you treat me that way because I'm black. After attaining worldwide acclaim as a black writer, Baldwin wrote Giovanni's Room, an explicitly homosexual love story. You published Giovanni's Room very early on in your... I finished the book in 55. And that, to, to deal with homosexuality, was yes. difficult. And you already were dealing with, you know, yeah. black writer... Mm -hmm. What made you decide to do that? Well, um, one can say almost that I didn't have an awful lot of choice. It was something, Joanna's room comes, um, comes out of something which tormented and frightened me, the question of my own sexuality. I used to know when I was younger, a great many men, boys, who were so terrified that they might... Um, have homosexual and, you know, they might be bisexual or they might, you know, want to go, you know, want to go to bed with a man and you might, might be able to fall in love with a man. And they were so frightened of that that they could never fall in love with anybody else, you know. They were so frightened of men, they couldn't touch women. Giovanni Jun comes something out of, comes somewhere out of that. Did you also feel that you wanted to get it on the record, your own homosexuality, early? I don't know if that, um... Well, I don't know if I wanted to get it on the record, but I, didn't want it to, but I wanted to confront it. I'm very glad that, you know, that that was done, because it also simplified my life in another way, because it meant that I had no secrets. Nobody could blackmail me. Do you think he was going to be as, as big a success and as important? No, no, no I didn't think that. But I knew that uh, he had to write. Bob. There's a price this republic exacts. Any black man or woman walking, and that is a crime. I paid for that crime in my life, and I don't believe my countrymen anymore. They will not do to him what they failed to do to me. I was seven years old 47 years ago, and nothing has changed since then. Look. Look, I don't mean it to you personally. I don't even know you. No. I got nothing against you. I don't know you personally. But I know you historically. You can't have it both ways. You can't swear 
to the freedom of all mankind and put me in chains. It sounds as if you believe that slavery put a curse on us somehow. Well, it is a curse, you know. Um, the American sense of reality is dictated by, by what Americans are trying to avoid. And if you're trying to avoid reality, how can you face it, you know? If you don't know what is going on in the ghettos of this nation, in the hearts and minds of women and men you see every day, you don't, you don't, first of all, in that case, you don't really know what's going on in your own heart and mind. And you have no way of knowing what's going on in the hearts and minds of millions of people on this, on this globe. You have told people, this nation in particular, a lot of what they don't want to hear. Yeah, I have. I've tried. No, you never know. But I tried, yes, to... Um, the head of the song says, wake the children sleeping. You know, one's supposed to be a disturber of the peace. <laughs> 